Okay, so let's talk about um, repeating animations for loops or for other things that we uh, that we use in our projects. So a quick example of this would be um, if I take a cube uh, and I, I'm just going to make a simple animation of this looping. So I'll go to frame zero. Uh, actually, first I'm going to move this from model to object. And um, I'm just going to rotate it. So at zero, I'm going to drop a keyframe in. And then I'm going to grab my rotate tool. I'm going to move to the end at frame 90. I'm going to spin this around along the y axis. Down here in, the, in under the attributes, I can actually just type in what I want. And because I want this to loop, I'm, I'm, I could make it 360, but that's going to add another frame. Remember, it's going to have a zero frame and 360 frame on top of each other. So it's going to sit for a little bit longer. So we don't want that. I'm just going to do 359. All right. So it's going to turn 359 degrees. Uh, and then I'll put a keyframe in. So we just have a simple spin rotation. All right. Now, um, with this in my viewer, you know, it's just it's just repeating, right? It's just going and going because we're, we're going from 90 back to zero and it's repeating again. Um, one thing I want to do with this really quickly is um, make it constant, a constant speed, so it doesn't have the slow in and slow out. So I'll just go up to layouts and I'm going to go to animate so I can see my timeline here. And uh, I'm going to click on the F curves. So switch to F curve mode, click this button. And here I can see the animation curves, right? And to make that more constant, I can just click on this little button here called linear. And it's gonna straighten out those curves. And now I should have a constant speed of animation that's just gonna look like it loops and loops and loops and loops. So now if I were to make my project longer, so let's make this 270 frames, right? I'm just gonna add that. And then in order to preview it, I'm going to drag this out so I can see the whole timeline, all right? So now if I do this, it is going to spin. When it hits 90, it's just going to stop, okay? So if we wanted this to continue spinning and spinning and spinning in the timeline, um, we could click on the cube here, right? So under the in the timeline itself, click on the object that you want. And we definitely animated that cube, okay? So here we have this uh, properties up here called before and after, right? Uh, and basically after is, let's look at this in the, the dope sheet. Okay, the, this timeline you can zoom in and out of. So I'm just gonna zoom out just like in the viewports and you can actually drag left and right too. So this entire animation from first keyframe to the last keyframe um, is, you, you know, it'll go along this and it'll stop, right? So if I want this to repeat after it hits this end keyframe, the last one, I can go from constant to just click repeat, okay? And so what this will do is if I go back to the beginning now, it, when it hits the end, it's just gonna keep repeating that same sequence again and again and again. So this cube will spin as long as your, um, as your project is, okay? And, uh, you know, if you wanted to, let's see, repetitions. I think if we just put one in here, let's see what happens. I think zero is continuous and then one, let's see if it just does one. Got one going, it's going on to the next one and at 180, it should stop. Okay, so that's the thing too. You can add uh, the amount of repetitions of that uh, as needed. Zero is just gonna be continuous and then any number that you add in will be that amount of count past that sort of timeline, okay? So, so this can be really helpful when you're doing, um, you know, continuous kind of motion and, um, and just a great way to, to think about any sort of repeating or looping cycles that may happen in your scene. Okay, so to take this a little bit further, you know, let's say I wanted to have this thing continual to spin, but I also wanna do some extra movements to it. Now, if I were to, let's say, in this, you know, sequence here, start to move it, it would interrupt my looping cycle. So anytime you, you make changes within your, within your, um, your, your first 
in the last keyframe, it's going to record the position, the scale, the rotation. So if I were to move this around, it would interrupt this and I would have some kind of jumping back and forth. So one thing you can do um, is you can create a, another hierarchy to animate. So an easy way to do this is just to cl click on your object in the objects manager, go up to object and just click group objects. And what that's going to do is um, it's going to put them in this folder called a null. All right. So the null, I'm just going to call this box. Okay. So this is the category that you can actually animate. So anything you do to the hierarchy will be done to this sequence as well. So as an example, if I take the box and I go to frame zero, all right, and I bring it down, okay, can create a keyframe, then I can go to the end of my sequence and I can bring it up like off camera. There we go. So now I've created a sequence of it moving across the screen, but within that, it's also gonna be spinning and repeating that hierarchy, all right? So if we view this, you can see. So I've got my repetition of that spinning around and plus I've animated um, the null or the, the grouped objects so that it will uh, continue to move. So sometimes when you're dealing with these sort of objects, you need to think about how they're grouped and what their hierarchy is so that you can animate accordingly without interrupting the other things that you're working on. So that in a nutshell is dealing with repeating animations, which can be really helpful for some types of projects.